What we're going to do is we're going to do three lessons of Latin. At the end of three lessons of Latin, you will be able to read, I hope if you concentrate, a short Latin poem written by a Roman 2,000 years ago, OK? Now, I'm going to show you that not only is Latin easier than Spanish and stuff, but I'm also going to show you that you know some of it already. Nobody speaks Latin, but you actually use Latin in your language and in the world all the time. And here we have one example of that. Who is, who is... David Beckham. Right, OK. Now, what's David Beckham got to do with Latin? Jenny, what's David Beckham got to do with Latin? I don't know. I just knew it was David Beckham because I love David Beckham. Right, well, come up here. Come on, Kissy. Yeah. Come on, Kissy. Yeah, I shall. He's got Latin. Oh, man. He's got his throwing pen. Are you sure? Can I have Yeah, come on. Yeah, we'll we'll have two to start with. Quite free for you See quite if you can make out that. No, that was Latin. Does that mean I'm in? It says. <laughs> She's got a bit. She said, it says something we can't read there at all. Amen. Two. Is it like the person? Oh, it's his father, isn't it? Uh, close, who said that? Me. It's actually about Victoria, but it says... Oh, does oh, sorry, it? did you say nobody speaks What does it anymore? say? Ut amem et foeam, and it is written underneath Victoria, and it's a bit soppy, actually. It means to love her and to cherish her. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's just hit me on my hand. Does he have Victoria? I bet he's talking about Victoria, no way. Does he have a tattoo saying Victoria? Yeah, it has a tattoo here saying Victoria in Hindi. Is that, that's what that's it, Madonna? Well done. On the other arm, he's got two Latin tattoos. And this one actually was a bit easier to read, but it's even stupider. It says, Perfectio in Spiritu, Spiritual... Spiritually perfect. Exactly. See? You know it. Spiritually perfect. I've done that for the past five years. Great. Well, you'll be a great help to us then. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I just yeah. guessed it because it's spiritually perfect. Well, exactly. What I want to do is show you that you already know and speak quite a lot of Latin. Let me give you one example. Let's suppose you're going out and guys at the back, just give me a bit of time. You're going out and you're going to buy some stuff at the supermarket. You're going to buy some cigarettes, some pizza. And you say, what am I going to do? I'm going to buy cigarettes, pizza. Coke, etc., etc., etc. What does etc. mean when you go to more, 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 more and more and more and so on 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 exactly all this etc. 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 Right. When we write etc., how do we normally write it? Etc. Etc. What's that? Etc. It's etc. What does it actually mean? No, I don't know. Etc. Just hang on a tick. I'm just going to show you what this means and so we're going to have your question. It means et... Is it not E-C-T? That's what I thought. Cetera. E and that is Latin for and the rest. So oh. actually et cetera is a Latin word. Et cetera and the rest. And don't worry about cetera, but one of the words you're going to use in this lesson and for the rest of the lessons is et which is the Latin word for and. Now, Jenny had a question and then... I don't want it to sound rude. <laughs> like, I don't want you to take attention or anything, but you see, if nobody speaks Latin, what's the point of like, learning it? We're going to come to that in a minute. Oh, Part I didn't want it to be no. rude or anything. No, I, no, I think it's a really good question. But first of all, before we come to that question, what I'm going to show you is that actually you do speak quite a lot of Latin, really. Um, so you said about an et cetera thing. So is it that et means and, and et cetera means the rest? Yeah. Right, there's at least one person in the room who's yeah. got a Latin name. No. Okay, who is it? Tell us who. Chloe, stand up, please. Hey. You've got a Latin name. Oh, <laughs> the person in the room yeah. who has a Latin name is Chloe. Right? What's that mean? It's an ancient, it's both Greek and Latin. I'm not going to And I'll tell you what it means. Raccoon, what? maybe. Shall I tell you what it means? It means little green shoot. Little green shoe. <laughs> Little green shoe. So, yeah. All right. And what we will do, if Chloe persists and is as interested as she now looks, we will uh, bring in a love poem in Latin. 
Now you can get your coins out. What can you see written round the edge? Decus, entertainment. Yeah. Decus, something and two, please. Brilliant. It sounds like some kind of Harry Potter. So entertainment means titanium. Not quite. The pounds, <coughs> Connor. <coughs> there is an honesty box here. Yeah. A what box? Honesty. When you leave the class, you, want to donate you, you put your pound in the honesty box. If I get the right number of pound coins back, yeah. then you will be all rewarded next lesson. But you know, you're not meant to say that. You're not meant to say that. You're just meant to say, here's the box in the back. You put the box in the back and you get it more. Look, I'm, getting in, I'm getting into bribery. I bribe Chloe with some Latin love poetry. I'm bribing anybody with anything. Now, well, so far, it says quite a lot of Latin. Even now, in your pocket, on Beckham's arms, we use it all the time. We say verses, etc. Right? So, Latin is part of the language we learn. It's also part of the language that we use in a sense at a deeper level. An awful lot of the words that we use in everyday speech are not actually Latin themselves, but they come from Latin words. Um, passion is a Latin word. Liberty is a Latin word. Statue of Liberty. Statue is a Latin word. Statua means statue in Latin. We have statue. Liberta of not Latin. But statue and liberty are both Latin words. If I were to tell you that the word to walk in Latin was ambulo, can you think of any word in English that might come from ambulo? Yeah. It co actually, it comes from battles. It comes from warfare in the 18th century. What do, why do you think? Yeah, you, yeah. Georgia, brilliant. They used to, what they did in battles, and the word ambulance comes from battles, where people used to rush on with stretchers, walking, and pick up the wounded and take them off. Um, so really, the English language ain't our own language, because we just nicked it, like... Why do you think there are so many? Why do you think there are? According to the English language team, they needed to grab some new work from somewhere, so they picked that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, one, that's one reason. When they left. The Romans, well, the one thing we know about the Romans is that they actually were in control of Britain for about 400 years. So some of the language we have, some of the language we have goes back that far. Rome has an enormous array of towns right across the country and you can almost always tell which town was originally a roman town because it ends the end of it is something like caster like lancaster can you think of some more doncaster yeah, or chester colchester manchester. worcester that's right manchester, manchester. this word caster or chester goes back to a very simple Latin word, which is castra, which means army camp. Okay. So all those places like Manchester or Doncaster or Chester... They're all army camps. ...are all originally Roman army camps, OK? Right. If we are going to be able to just read a very little bit of Latin, which I hope we are, you have got to master one bit of Latin grammar and I just want you to concentrate on this because it's going to be quite difficult but once you've got it we can then start reading things that are interesting and one of the things I'm going to try and do before we finish today is I'm going to try and read with you one or two of the graffiti the graffiti on the walls of ancient Pompeii yes. scrawled up by Romans before the city of Pompeii was, was uh, destroyed by the eruption of Vesuvius. You know the story of Pompeii? Yeah, the volcano. Volcano, that's right. Volcano explodes in 79, completely covers this city. Killed everyone, in it? And killed an awful lot of people, not everybody. Now, one of the things that was discovered when people excavated Pompeii was the town brothel. Oh, 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 oh. Well, like they, they loved that, don't they? And if I were to tell you they that the no town brothel <laughs> was covered with graffiti. I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of graffiti do you imagine? Dirty pictures. Porn. 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 Graffiti pictures. So what I'm doing on the wall. I had a very good time here. Now, what we're going to do 
is we are going to try to get through. Or today, we're going to look at just one. But in the next couple of lessons, we're going to try and see if we can actually read some of this graffiti ending up with a poem. We're going to start with showing you first that you know quite a lot about how the English language works. And then I'm going to transpose that to the Latin language. So I'm going to use the English language as a frame for showing you how Latin works. I think the point, people often get frightened when people talk about grammar, when they talk about English grammar or they talk about Latin grammar, they think, oh God, that's not what I do. All grammar is, is just the rules about how you use the language that you use that you know already but don't know that you know, basically. Now, suppose I were to say to you, how many pigs are there in the farm? And Georgia says there's two pigs. There's three pigs. Now suppose two of them have a sad accident. Bacon, sarnie and ketchup. Right. Let's imagine, now, this is just fantasy, Georgia, do not worry, it is fantasy. Let's imagine that two of these poor animals sadly pass away because they weren't properly looked after, and we are left with only one. If I say to you, how many pigs have you got? And you say, I've got one pigs. Would you think that was wrong? No, yes. Yeah, right. right. yeah, yeah. right. What would you say? Because pigs is plural. If you say I've got one pig, you'd use put no s on the end. Jenny, you're really good at this. But so concentrate because you're good at it. Uh, one pig, but two pigs. Now you don't need to know anything about the technical terms for why that's so to realise that saying saying one pigs just sounds wrong, doesn't it? OK? Um, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say, I am standing. Now, Jenny is going to stand up. Oh, yeah. We are standing. Brilliant, Connor. We are standing. What do we say if we want to point at Jenny and you. say, you are standing? This is English. This is English. Suppose now somebody wants to talk about Jenny and we say, Jenny am standing, what's the matter with her? Oh, she, she is. She is standing. She can now sit down. Happy. Jenny is in the process of sitting down. That's right. What we've just done is we've seen that when we want to talk about being, amming, aring in Latin, we go, I am, you are, he or she is, we are and they are. And if you say you is, it doesn't sound right. Because it's not right. Okay. It's not proper English. It doesn't, I don't care whether it's proper English or not, it just doesn't sound right to us. It's breaking the rules for English that we've got in our heads. Now, now would you like to know what that is in Latin? Because once you know that, you can then read some proper Latin. There's two things you need to know. One is that in Latin, you don't need I, you, he, or whatever. Why? Is there vowels in Latin? There's vowels, Why? but you don't need to say... If you say I am, you just say am. You just say am. If, uh, uh, somebody here has learnt Italian. Who's learnt Italian? Yeah. Now, do you remember when you did Italian that you don't need to say I in Italian? You can just say sono. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't need to say I. So that makes Latin much easier. Right, right, boys and girls. There's just one more complication, and then we're away to translate things. You don't need to say I, you, he, she, it, or anything like that. You just use the word. So am, is, etc. Latin is slightly different from English because it distinguishes... When you're talking about you, it distinguishes whether you're talking about you on your own, Georgia, or you all. Right? If I say, you are now listening to me, you don't quite know whether I mean just Danielle or whether I mean a whole lot of you. Now, in Latin, they distinguish between talking just to one person and talking to a lot of people. That's the only difference. Now, if you look at your homework sheet, you'll find on it what I am about to write. How many languages do you speak? About five. What languages do you speak? I speak English, French, 
Italian, more German. Oh, oh, German. Oh, what was it? Um, it wasn't like trying to be rude question. Just like, why do we learn Latin if like never? We're getting all chat. Yeah. Sorry. Hold on. That was a, that was a good question, and I, I got lost on that question. And I think the. Part of the reason is, there's two reasons. For me, the reason is there's wonderful things written in it, which is exciting to read. The Romans are bloody interesting. Uh, Roman culture and civilization is interesting, and you get at it through Latin. But also, it's something which really helps you think about how language operates in general. So do every, does every language get their language from Latin? Most European languages are, are, are strongly connected. They get, there's all sorts of other roots to them. What about like Brazilian? And see, Spanish, see, Spanish in South America comes also from Latin. Now, here is some simple Latin for you to translate, helped by some pictures. Have a look at it. You don't need to bother about the or a because Latin doesn't have a the or an a. Look at your sheet and try and work out what each of those sentences means. These were made up by me, but the next lot we're going to do is from the walls of Pompeii. Right, okay, Carl. Camilla est in villa. Camilla is in the villa. What about Camilla et Marcus sunt in piscina? Camilla et Marcus in the swimming pool. Camilla and Marcus are in the swimming pool. Right, now do the next one then. Camilla et Marcus, known son in Peschina, son in Silva. Camilla and Marcus are not in the swimming pool there in the forest. That's it. And what about the last one? Georgia. Yeah, he's drunk. He's drunk. And what have I said in reply? Known some ebrius, some sobrius. What would I have just said? Not, he's not drunk, so he's tipsy. He's He's sober. Sober. He's sober. I'm not drunk, I'm sober. Oh. Now, Class. you are now going to move on to... I'm working on that spec. For the final um, like two minutes, you're going to look at some real Latin. First, I'm going to just write it up on the board, uh, copying it down in relatively easy-to-read handwriting. And then you, are going to, then you are going to have a look at something that was actually scrawled on a ward of, of Pompeii. Now, what do you see here? <laughs> It's a really stupid Roman with a vast Roman nose. What's he got on his head, do you Ball. reckon? No hair. He's got his uh, bald. One of them, one of them like, ivory. Nine yard green it's ivory. 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 And this up here is something I've been saving you from up to now. This is what Latin handwriting looks like. And it's really bloody awful. But what it says is Rufus Est. Now, Rufus is the guy's name. So, so it just means... Rufus, Rufus, Rufus is. Rufus is, or because Latin can put things in different order, and we'll come to this next time. This is Rufus. Rufus est. This is Rufus. Yeah, but how do you tell the difference? You can't. You just you have to work it out. You have to. You. It could be Rufus est ebrius would mean Rufus is ebrius. What's ebrius? You've had it on your sheet. Drunk. Yeah, Rufus is drunk. Rufus est, it's Rufus. Rufus is, this is Rufus. Now, look a little bit more excited, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is, you know, I, I didn't come across this kind of stuff until about 10 years of Latin. This is real, real Latin written. Yeah, OK. Now, but you've got a homework sheet there. What I expect you to do is to do that by the time we come to next Monday morning. You either can give, give it in to the headmaster on Monday morning, but it's, it's all written out on your homework sheet. Learn the words and then answer the questions one and two at the bottom. If you don't understand what you've got to do... Ask Jeeves. <laughs> you can do it any sort of way. You just email me, OK? All right. You have to pick up a form with us. Take paper. Um, can you just take the paper, yeah? You can take the paper. Tomorrow, I think John's going to explain that there'll be an electronic way of you submitting the work. But for the time being, take that. Pound coins in the box. Got my homework sheet. It's all nice. Listen. You're really good. Cigarettes. Yeah, that's like 20. Bye, miss.
I was quite good, wasn't I? You were not. I hate learning. Oh, come on, you're not bad. Yeah, not and, what, you just done something really wrong then. What did you say? You said goodbye, miss. Goodbye, okay. Mary. Mary! That's what I meant. That's what I said. And you're Carl. No. Where's the yes. white stuff coming from? Look, you're undermining me. Goodbye, Mary. Thank you, bro. No.